If you look at the reality of my work environment, it's, uh, it's become so mobile uh, that it's no longer about a confined space, but that it's actually about a series of opportunities, if you like. Mobility has long claimed its, its territory um, in the definition of what a workspace could be. I mean, my, my personal workspace is uh, primarily transient, so there is um, a kind of very intense rhythm um, of, of travel, uh, hotel, uh, many, many places I, I visit um, to meet people uh, for the projects we're doing across the world. And th there's a yeah, really um, in intense um, kind of being connected, Skype with the teams at the offices, look at things together, talk through. There's always a few hours every day in a way dedicated to that. And then there are the things you, you do externally, if you like. Um, but the mobility of that has become really key to, to the way we're working. The, the most important thing about the workspace for me is still the table. Um, and even in my apartments, I have for uh, almost my entire life never had a couch, but I've always had one or several tables and I prefer a really big table on which you can virtually do anything. You could eat there, you can work there, but in, in a way that is the, the center for, for interaction, really. At the same time, if you talk about the, the classical office, the traditional office, and of course for architects that's still very important because it's, it's all about people working and actually collaborating. I think a sense of a collaborative space is something very, very important. So, what kind of space makes people really do things together. And I think, ironically, very often the best spaces to work in are the ones that have least to do with design. So I believe architects that, that uh, have offices that are extremely beautifully designed don't do any interesting work anymore because they're already enveloped by yeah, the, the end point of it. So I actually think that that even also there in the in the sort of permanence of a workspace, um, that something quite open is, is very important for that. Yeah, I think for very long the the architectural discourse and discussion has been governed by by in a way very very material interests, materiality, light. And, and space was talked about as if it was a purely uh, sculptural concern. But I'm actually really interested in, in the psychological aspects of space and the emotional aspects of space. What, what do spaces to you when you're in them? What do they make you want to do or not want to do? How do they upset you or how do they comfort you? And particularly if you work like us in, in many different places of the world, in many different cultures in the world, I think it's very important to to comprehend the psychology in which you work, uh, both the psychology of a place, but of course also of, of the people and their culture, their habits, what they do and what they don't do, and, and then to begin to work with that. In parts to, to accommodate that, but in parts of course also to challenge that, to see what you could insert in certain situations to, to stimulate new, new reactions. For me in my work, it's, it's incredibly important um, almost to test what we do through a series of uh, fictional narratives where we try to imagine what could happen in spaces or if these and these things would happen, what, what kind of space would you need in order to accommodate that. And that's, that's nothing very, very fixed and, and boiled down to a kind of formulaic, this means that and here you do that, but simply a, a kind of really more emotional spectrum of possibilities of a space that I'm really interested in. Um, it's, it's very dangerous to uh, design for places that you have absolutely no relationship to. 
and that ultimately you have absolutely no understanding of. So I've always tried to spend really maximum amount of time in the places that I'm, that I'm working, um, which very often meant I, I had to move. So I, I lived in many different countries actually in my life uh, because I simply wanted to, to get a sense, literally a sense for those places and then a, a sense for how architecture could could attain a meaning in those contexts. And uh, probably the most uh, dramatic of these decisions was when, when uh, almost 12 years ago, I decided to, to move to China because I was working on this immensely big and important project there and really understood at the very beginning that I think the challenge of, of the project itself was, was so extreme that um, we could have never made it happen remotely without being there on a daily basis and really an understanding the anxieties of that, that this also created, yeah, the, the, the worries, the doubts, um, but also um, to understand how to maneuver in an environment that was changing almost on a daily basis, yeah, where every few months even the building codes changed, everything was changing. So you had to be there and continuously re-strategize and strategically adopt everything you were doing to that environment. And that was only possible through really personal presence and personal involvement. I mean, when I, when I came to China um, for the first time to, to work uh, and we started the CCTV project and we were uh, walking through the, um, through the abandoned factory halls that were covering the site still and there was a big billboard in, in red Chinese letters and, and I asked my colleague uh, what that was saying and uh, it was one of uh, uh, Deng Xiaoping's old uh, slogans saying, um, adjust during development, develop during adjustment. And of course, a as much of a political slogan as that was, but there's of course also a very philosophical meaning uh, really to it, that you can only change something if you allow it to change yourself as well. And I think that was quite a, an emblematic message for the entire journey there. You have to really be involved and you have to be willing um, to, to, to not only come and insert your thoughts into a context, but also let yourself be influenced and taught by, by, a, by a situation. And I think only if that dialogue takes place, that's where really meaning happens. Yeah.